Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Design with Ruzwe. Continuing with CSWA practice problems, today we'll work on question 1.5. Let's take a look at this question. So in this question, as you can see, the unit of measurement is IPS. So when we start working in SOLIDWORKS environment, we need to ensure we have the same setting. Now, looking at the question, we see this is a geometry which looks like a wrench. And here in the bottom, we have top view of this geometry. We can find a thickness in a front plane, and we also have a detailed view of the head with three dimensions. So again, my preference is to start with the top view, having a 2D sketch, adding dimensions, and then use extruded bus feature to make the final 3D model. So let's go to SOLIDWORKS and start modeling this part. Okay, so as the first step, I need to change unit of measurement. As you can see right now, I have millimeter gram second as unit of measurement. So to change this setting, you click on this drop down menu, you click on IPS, and now the, the unit of measurement has changed. Okay, so the next step is to sketch a 2D model. To do this, you click on the sketch tab, click on the sketch option and then you're going to use top plane for modeling this part. As mentioned in the question, the part is symmetric. So I'm going to start with making a center line to make sure that I can use that line as a symmetry line. So to do this, I go to a sketch, I go to a line, but you can see there is a drop down menu. I click on it and I choose center line. And then I'm going to draw a long center line here. This is not really part of the geometry, it's just there to help me with modeling. Now I start with head of the range. So what I'm going to do, again from a sketch tab, I'm going to choose line option and I'm going to roughly sketch something similar to the head of the range. So what I'm going to do, I start from this point, I go up, I go left, I go up, and that's it and then I'm gonna do the same thing here 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 and here okay as you know the geometry is symmetric so it's good it's wise to set relationship between these lines and make sure they're always staying symmetric to do this simply select the first line here, hold control, select the center line, keep holding control and select this line. And now you see from the menu on the left side we have symmetric options so I'm gonna choose this. Okay we're good. And I'm gonna repeat the same process for other lines. So choosing this line, center line and this line and again symmetric same things here choosing this line center line and this line and symmetric okay so we are good now we have relationship between each of these lines next step is drawing an arc to connect these lines and make the head of the range to do this I click on a sketch and I choose the arc option and here I'm gonna click on the center line click on one point and make the arc okay as you can see the arc is not contacting other lines so what I need to do at this point I'm gonna click on this point hold control and I click on this point and then from the menu I have on the left side I'm gonna choose coincident to make sure these points are in contact okay we are good so now we have a closed geometry for the head of the wrench. Now let's dimensioning this part. To do this, I click on a sketch and choose a smart dimension. So one dimension that I have is this dimension, which should be 0.25 inch. And then I know that from left side to the origin of this geometry should be 0.4. And I also know that from the top side 
to the bottom side, it should be 0.5 inch. And finally, I know that the arc that I have must have diameter equal to 0.8 of inch. So I'm going to click on this. You can see that it's a radius that is shown here. So the radius is diameter divided by 2. So it's going to be 0.4 of the inch. OK, so that's good. Now we have the sketch for the head of the geometry. Let's zoom out. Next, we're going to work on the rest of this geometry. To do this, let's click on the sketch tab and click on a line. And I'm going to draw a line, not from there, uh, maybe from here. Yeah. And this line needs to be horizontal. OK. And I'm going to draw the same line here. OK. We know that these lines should be symmetric. So again, I'm going to choose first line, hold control, choose middle line, hold control, and choose the third line. And again, from the left menu, I'm going to choose symmetric. And we also know the distance between these two lines must be 0.4 of inch. So I'm going to choose this dimension, it should be 0.4. Okay. And now last step is the end point of this geometry. So to model that part, first I'm going to click on the circle and I'm going to make a circle. Okay, so that's a circle I want. The diameter of this circle must be 0.8 of an inch. So this should be 0.8. And I know that we need a polygon in the center of this circle. So from the sketch tab, I'm going to click on polygon. And then here, I'm going to make a polygon. OK, so first of all, we need to have a straight polygon. So to do this, I click on the top line. And from the relationship tab on this menu, I'm going to choose horizontal. OK, now it's a straight. And I know that the distance between the top line and the bottom line of the polygon must be 0.5. OK. Now it's time to trim the geometry. As you can see, um, this line is not in contact with the circle. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select the end point of the line, hold control, and I'm going to select the circle. And again, from the left menu, I'm going to choose coincident relationship. And I repeat the same process for the second line. So I click on the point, I click on the circle, and choose coincident. OK. This is good. OK, so the last step is to use the last dimension that we have available. And that is the distance between this point and this point, which is kind of defining the overall length of the range. So I click on these points, and the dimension should be 3.25. OK. As you can see, after applying this dimension, we have some sort of explosion in the geometry. It doesn't look like what we had in a very beginning. And the reason is the geometry was not fully constrained. And when we, when we applied this dimension, SOLIDWORKS automatically changed the ge geometry. But don't panic. You can always click on one side of the geometry and make a change in it. So let's do that. As you can see, the geometry is not still fully constrained, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to simply click on one blue point, point like this, and then I'm going to drag it. You see, as I'm dragging it, I'm seeing my original geometry. So no reason to panic. It's just happening because the geometry was not fully defined. And when you apply the new dimension, SOLIDWORKS change the geometry automatically. But you can always make a change in it by dragging one point and then moving it and make your own geometry. OK. As you can see, although we applied every single dimensions that we have available, the geometry is still not fully constrained. You can see that in a status tab here in the bottom, SOLIDWORKS is showing us that the geometry is underdefined, which is not good. Because as you saw, once you change one of these dimensions, there could be an explosion happening in your geometry. So it's always wise to have a fully defined geometry. So let's check out 
the question again to see if we can find another relationship that maybe we are missing here. If you look at the geometry, you can see that we are missing a really subtle relationship in this geometry. Let's have a look at detail A. On the detail A, you can see that we have two points, center of the arc and this top point. And these two points are having a vertical relationship. They are right underneath each other. So you see the center line point and you see this line. And there is a hint here. You can see that in the question there is a vertical line. That is telling me that there should be a relationship between the center of the circle and that point. So let's add that relationship to the geometry that we have and see if it can make the geometry fully defined or not. So now in the SOLIDWORKS, we click on the center line, we hold control, and now I click on this line. And from the left menu, I choose the vertical option. Okay, now as you can see the geometry is fully black, which means that the geometry is fully defined. You can also check this here in a status bar. You can see that the geometry is fully defined. Okay, awesome. Now we have everything ready and we can just use extruded bus feature and make the final 3D model. To do this, I'm going to click on feature tab, click on extruded bus, and then again, SOLIDWORKS asks us to choose the contours. To do this, I'm choosing this contour, this one, and finally this one. And the thickness that we have according to question is 0.3 inch. So I'm going to choose 0.3 inch for the thickness. And I click OK. OK, awesome. So now we have the final geometry. Okay. So it's time to check if this is actually the final and a correct answer. So to do this, again, we go and check the question. There's a volume provided by SOLIDWORKS and we can check that number. As you can see, the total volume provided in the question is 0.5492. If we round up this number, it's going to be 0.55 cubic inch. So let's check that number, total volume, and see if we get the same answer or not. In SOLIDWORKS, you click on Evaluate tab, go to Mass Properties, and here you can see the total volume is provided. Total volume is 0.55 cubic inches, which is showing that our modeling is correct and we found the correct answer. Okay, I think that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, if you have any feedback, any question, please feel free to add comment down below. Thanks again for watching. My name is Ruzbe. Hope to see you again soon in the next video.